What's up? Welcome to this video. And in this actually series of videos, I want to show you how I approach processing kicks. And I want to take you from the problem that you're not sure if your kicks going to translate well, you think it might be weak, you don't think it's punchy enough. I want to take you from that problem to a new problem, which is that you might overdo it. Okay, you'll have these tools that you can use and you might make your kick too punchy. All right, because different tracks call for, you know, different levels of punchiness, I guess you could say. But at least what I'll try to do in this series of videos is give you the tools that you need so that no matter really what kick you're working with, you can massage it in a way that's going to work for the track. So the first thing I want to do is just break down how I, I guess, understand a kick. Now you can think of kicks in terms of high frequency content down to mid content to low mid content to low end content, stuff like that. But I actually prefer to just divide it up dynamically. So transient and sustained. So let me show you what that looks like. So I'm just going to play this kick. Okay, so if we come over to the master here, I have the LFO tool. And let's just check out what it looks like here. And so this right here would be the transient. So if I was going to bring this down, let's bring the depth up so that the LFO tool is doing something here. This would be the transient right here. Maybe we can even make that shorter like this, right? Right, that's the very beginning part of the sound. Maybe this is a little bit better like this or something. And then we have the sustain portion. So I'm just going to flip this around. So now we're just going to hear the, the end part. And so that's obviously the low end. So this is another way kind of to separate kicks according to frequency content. But that's just because the frequency content changes over time in a kick. And I'd prefer to look at a kick dynamically this way. I prefer to do, you can think of it as dynamic splitting as opposed to frequency splitting. Because what we're going to get into is treating the different parts of the kick in different ways. So for example, maybe your whole kick isn't working, right? So it needs like a comprehensive treatment. But sometimes maybe you just need the transient to hit a little bit harder. So what you could do is you can process the transient independent of the sustain portion of the kick. So transient, and then this would be the sustain. And you could talk about this however you want. You can think of this as uh, transient sustain that's the way that i think about it basically because that's the way that transient designers that's the language that transient designers use you could think of this as at attack tail attack body it doesn't matter okay i just want to be clear that uh, we're just splitting the kick here dynamically now the first thing i want to show you that you could do with this piece of information is one of my favorite tricks and that is doing a parallel transient i'm just going to reset the lfo tool here all right and so if you don't have the lfo tool this is just a very easy way that you could do this i'm going to create a midi channel here and i'm going to drop this kick into the midi channel now i'm going to group this command g you could do that but you can't see me do that and then i'm going to open up these chains here and i'm just going to duplicate this and what we'll do now is i'm going to jump I'm going to keep this in classic mode. I like working in classic mode for this. Uh, but I'm going to jump to the second one and just solo it here. And let's create some MIDI. So now what I'm going to do is we're going to create a parallel transient layer. And so I'm just going to solo this and just change the ADSR, okay, the envelope of the kick, so that I just get the transient. I'm going to switch over to controls here because we get a visual of the ADSR. And I'm just going to bring this down. And that's obviously going to take away the sustain portion of the kick. And then we just need to bring the decay down and we'll start to get a transient. Check it out. And just to show you that on the LFO tool here, check it out. Just a nice little transient. Okay. And then of course, what we could do is just simply mix that in if the transient is the problem. So I'm going to just rename this really quick. And so just to show you what this does, I mean, we'll keep it pretty dramatic. Usually I wouldn't have it this high, it's just a matter of slightly mixing it in a little bit. But um, so this is the kick. And then if we bring the transient in, I'll just AB it for you a couple times here.
Obviously, it gives the front of the kick a lot more bite. Now, you might be thinking, well, isn't that just going to bring up the level of the kick? You're just adding more volume, basically. And yeah, that's exactly right. So if I come over to the master just to show you that. So here's the LFO tool. And I'm just going to play the kick soloed here. So here's the kick. And as soon as I bring the transient layer in, so I'm going to unsolo the kick. Obviously, we're just going to get a little spike in level right here. So that's exactly what's going on. But what I like to do is just simply clip the level off. Okay. But what we need to do is we need to actually set the kick here to unity gain to zero, basically. And so in simpler, I'm just going to come over to the volume and hit negative eight because simpler brings it down by about four dB. And so if I solo the kick now, it should be exactly right. So that's, that's exactly right. And then with the transient, I'm going to do the same thing, negative eight. And so now the kick is just clipping the is clipping out of Ableton. So if I press play, you'll see that we're over 5 dB here. Okay. And so what I like to do in this case is just get the glue compressor and turn it into a pure clipper. So clip off whatever additional signal is brought in by the transient. So I'm going to turn the soft clip on. I'm going to bring the range all the way down. So this kind of basically just deactivates whatever's going on in the glue compressor. And now listen. Okay, so if we check the master, come over here, we're sitting at negative 0.5. Okay, and if I jump back over here, if I turn off the transient layer and jump back over, here we're sitting at negative 0.57. So it's adding just a tiny bit. Obviously, we're not adding 5 dB, right? But of course, this doesn't sound that great because we're really overloading the clipper here. And so, of course, the point is to mix this in based on what is needed. So let's turn this off. Let's listen in the context of a little loop that I have going on here. We'll bring in the transient and maybe find a nice level for it that fits this track. Maybe it doesn't need it at all, though. All right, so let's start it around negative 20 here. And I'm just gonna just keep pressing up on the keyboard here to bring up the level of the transient and try to find something and try to find a level that makes the transient start to cut through a little bit more. Cool. And so negative eight seems to do the magic for me. It's not bringing too much, but it's just making the kick a little bit more powerful. So I'm just going to AB that again. Cool. And I even brought it down just a little bit more here to negative 10. Awesome. So that sounds really good to me. Um, this first video was just supposed to introduce some basic concepts, which was dynamic splitting with a kick, splitting the kick into transient and sustain, and then using that, I guess, knowledge to just create a parallel transient layer that's going to help your kick just bite a little bit more in the mix, cut through a little bit more in the mix. Now, this series of video, we're going to go deeper and deeper and deeper into this until ultimately, hopefully you just have a set of tools that will allow you to take any kick that you select for your track and just massage it in a way that's going to make it work perfectly. Assuming, of course, you've selected a track that's in the right, a kick that's in the right ballpark park for your track, but that's not too difficult. But uh, again, we're going to go deeper and deeper and deeper into this. But if there's any questions that you have on this first video, just leave a comment down below and I'll try to get to it. And plus, whatever questions you have as I make these videos, I can always um, update them and answer questions as we go. All right, because I try to anticipate things, but can't think of everything. But all right. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video.